Alright guys, I just picked myself up one of these Hyperkin Gen Mobiles. This is a portable Sega Genesis. I picked this up from Stone Age Gamer. If you guys have ever uh, seen the website StoneAgeGamer.com, he sells uh, pretty much all the uh, classic games, you know, used games for NES and Super NES and Genesis. But he also sells pretty much all of the clone systems. I mean, if you want an FC Mobile, or you want a, a Gen Mobile, or you know, one of those FC Twins, any of those clone systems, he's pretty much got them all. And he's pretty much got some of the best prices, which is why I bought uh, this off him. This on his website is $44.99. And I checked pretty much everywhere else on eBay sells it for $49.99. For those of you who don't know, the Gen Mobile is a portable Sega Genesis system. This is a clone machine that came out about six months ago. This is nothing new. I realize this thing's been out for a little while. But I finally picked up one for myself. Now, the weird thing is that around the same time, two completely different Gen uh, mobile Sega Genesis uh, clone systems came out. There was the Retro Gen, and there was the Gen Mobile, this one here. Uh, the Retro Gen has a slightly bigger screen, but a lot of people say they don't like the controls. This one has almost like a, a Sony-style D-pad on it, like what you'd see on the PSP, um, whereas the other one has like a round disc, chrome disc, and uh, supposedly the controls are a little bit better on this one. This one's also officially licensed. This is an official Sega Genesis, official Sega license, because this one has 20 games inside. The other one has games built in, but they're um, basically generic games, like the kind of games you might find on your cell phone. They're not licensed games. This one has 20 real Sega licensed games built in, and then, of course, the cartridge slot. Looking at the back here, we can see pretty much all of the main features. It's a 2.4 inch color TFT LCD screen. Obviously 16-bit graphics and sound. Uh, TV out capability, which is pretty cool, although pointless when you have the real hardware. Of course a cartridge slot for more games and a rechargeable battery. So pretty cool. It's nice packaging. A nice little uh, magnetic box here like you see with a lot of new stuff nowadays. They have this magnetic box. So here's the console itself. This is the first time I've seen one in person. I must say it's already a little bit smaller than I was expecting it to be. I was expecting it to be about the size of a PSP, probably because it sort of does look like a PSP, the shape of it, but uh, it's definitely smaller than a PSP, and uh, that is actually pretty cool. I'm sort of glad it's a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be. What else do we have in here? We have the AV cable. It is only mono, but uh, you know what? The fact that this handheld has <laughs> TV out in the first place is that's really just a bonus. I'll probably never use it, but uh, and there's the charger. Looks like a standard USB charger. Is it 5 volts? It is 5 volts, so it probably is just a standard USB charger. So here's the system. As you guys know, I am not a fan of clone systems. And this suffers from many of the issues other Genesis clones suffer with. And, you know, obviously you cannot replace the real hardware, and Genesis systems are cheap to pick up. But this is not replacing a Genesis. You buy this for the portable factor, this is replacing the Nomad. Now, the Nomad is a cool system, but it's way too expensive. The screen, let's be honest, is quite dated not the best LCD screen by today's standards and it takes six AA batteries and you know gets about three hours off of that so you know the Nomad's cool if you can find one and especially if you're a Sega collector you probably want a Nomad but this is definitely a good alternative so basically we have the cartridge slot here we have the uh, headphone out on the left side and the AV out for the special AV cables that it comes with. Uh, on the left side we have the volume control, we have uh, the reset button, we have the start button, the six button layout there, and the power button on the bottom. There's the USB port to charge it and some sort of a power LED indicator. Here's a close-up of the screen. As we can see the 20 games that it has built in.
And I'm going to start off with a Golden Axe. Let's check out Golden Axe. You have to press start to start the game. Now my camera's not picking up the screen. Uh, oh, I guess it is actually picking it up pretty good. The screen's a little bit on the small side. It does have to scale the resolution down. Let me turn the volume down there. It does have to scale the resolution down. So sometimes small text is a little bit hard to read, but for the most part, you can usually make it out. And as you can see, the screen's actually pretty good quality. Uh, the viewing angle, you know, uh, oh, maybe not perfect, although it's not as bad in person as it is on the camera. I mean, it gets a little bit darker and lighter, but not nearly as bad as it does on the camera. All right, so I've got three games out here that I want to try. The first is Gunstar Heroes, which I'm pretty sure is going to work, but mainly we're going to show it off because it has pretty vibrant colors and uh, it should show off the screen better than most other games. Game cartridges go in like so, which is nice because the label actually faces you. Let's turn that on. Now once again, as you can see, the screen is pretty decent quality for what it is. Like I said, it could be a little bit bigger so that it didn't have to scale down the graphics and maybe make the text a little bit easier to read. That text is extremely small and borderline unreadable, but you can read it. Overall, Gunstar Heroes looks pretty decent on this screen so far. Of course, I won't be able to play it with one hand holding the camera. But uh, let's get into the game, and then I'll turn up the volume, and we'll see how the music sounds here. Like I said, the sound sucks. It's coming through a little chintzy speaker, and so the fact that it's not perfect is, you know... It really doesn't matter. It's coming through a small chintzy speaker. I suppose if you plug headphones into this, you'd like to have better sound, but you get what you get. So let's try virtual racing. And it went to the list of 20 games. Hmm. Let's try virtual racing again. Maybe it just didn't make a good connection in there. No, it went to the menu again. Um, so it's possible that virtual racing doesn't work on this clone system, which isn't a surprise. Virtual racing doesn't even work on the Model 3 Genesis. What about Japanese games? Got a Japanese game here. Oh, well, it fits. And because it fits, I know it's going to work. This game's not region coded. If the game was region coded, I don't know if it would work or not. Probably not. Alright, with Sonic the Hedgehog in there, I'm going to hook the AV cables up and show you how the video quality is there. Sega! was pretty bad but like I said if you're playing it portably through this little chintzy speaker it's not really that big of a deal if you want the proper sound and the proper experience if you want the proper controls you're gonna play it at home on your real console I should also point out the controller on this thing isn't the greatest the way this is on such an angle and the buttons are really stiff the you know responsiveness and the way you have to kind of hold your hand and the buttons are so small Compared to a real six button controller, you know, the controls aren't as good, the sound isn't as good, but once again, we're missing the point. This is portable. One last thing I should point out that this Sega Genesis logo is a really cheap speak, uh, sticker, and uh, I'm going to peel that off in about five minutes. 
But uh, other than that, I mean, like I said, it's $45. We know it's a clone, but for what it is, you know, it does the job. You can play your Genesis games. It's portable, has 20 games built in. Um, you know, and it doesn't require batteries. It's got its own re built-in rechargeable battery, so it is pretty cool.